Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is dry heat sterilization. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. Make sure you subscribe to get all the good content. Check out the status bar below for our agenda and stick around to the end for the bonus questions. Our topic, dry heat sterilization, is covered by 1345 section 7.5.7. .7. Dry heat sterilization in five words. High temperatures inactivate all microorganisms. The equipment used for dry heat sterilization is called an autoclave. They use high temperatures, normally above 170 C, to kill all the microorganisms on the medical device. The high temperatures kill the microorganisms through oxidization or bursting of the cells. This sterilization process is normally used for glassware, metal parts, and oils. This sterilization technique has a number of drawbacks. The first and foremost being the extremely high temperatures. Second being the time that it takes to heat up and then cool down the product. Because of the high temperatures, this will rule out a large majority of the medical devices that we will be looking to sterilize. For any medical device that touches the circulatory system, we have to worry about pyrogens and more specifically, endotoxins. Dry heat sterilization is an excellent technique for depyrogenating medical equipment, parts, and medical devices themselves. Unfortunately, to depyrogenate with dry heat, it's gotta be heated up to 200 C to 250 C for more than 30 minutes for that depyrogenation process to actually be completed. Because of those extremely high temperatures, depyrogenating with dry heat does not work for most of the medical devices, the production equipment, and parts that go into the actual medical device. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, dry heat sterilization is the right sterilization process for my medical device. Second, my dry heat sterilization process is validated. Third, if my product requires pyrogen testing or endotoxin testing, I have that program implemented and maintained. And then finally, I maintain my equipment and I revalidate my process as required. How do I know it's not working? First, I use dry heat sterilization and it's not right for my product. It damages my product. Second, my sterilization process is not validated. Third, I don't consider pyrogens, I don't consider endotoxins. And then finally, I'm not maintaining my equipment, I'm not maintaining my, validated, my validations, I'm not doing my revalidations as required by my processes. And now for those three bonus questions. First, do we have any products where we use dry heat sterilization? If yes, can I get a list? Second, do we have any dry heat sterilization equipment on site at any of our manufacturing sites? If yes, which sites? And then finally, do any of our products require pyrogen or endotoxin testing? If yes, can you give me a list of those products? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained making quality systems simple for you.